a city has just added 100 new female recruits to its police force. The city will provide a pension to each new hire who remains with the force until retirement. In addition, if the new hire is married at the time of her retirement, a second pension will be provided for her husband. A consulting actuary makes the following assumptions. Each new recruit has 0.4 probability of remaining with the police force until retirement. Given that a new recruit reaches retirement with the police force, the probability that she is not married at the time of retirement is 0.5. The events of different new hires reaching retirement and the events of different new hires being married at retirement are independent. Calculate the probability that the city will provide at most 90 pensions to the 100 new hires and their husbands. So, um, here we can let X be the number of pensions a recruit gets at her retirement, where um, we are also counting the husband's pension in the recruit's pension, because the husband is getting it just because of the recruit. So if the husband also gets it, then we will say that the recruit is actually getting two pensions. We're not like dealing with husbands separately here. So the probability that a recruit will get one pension is 0.4 uh, times uh, 0.25 because the recruit will get one pension if she uh, makes it to retirement, which is 0.4, and she is not married. So 0.4 times 0.25, that's 0.1. And then if she's also married at the time of retirement, then the probability, then she'll get two pensions and the probability of that will be uh, being uh, uh, in the force at the time of retirement, 0.4 times the probability of getting married, which will be 0.75, right? One minus 0.25. So that will be 0.3. So that's the probability of getting two pensions. Now, central limit theorem will apply because we are dealing with 100 recruits and we are um, trying to calculate the total number of pensions among the 100 recruits. So uh, we could have one pension or two pensions. Um, these are the only non-zero scenarios. We also have the zero scenario, but we don't need to consider it because that's not going to contribute to these uh, terms. So um, one pension as we calculated above is 0.1 and two pensions is 0.3. So the product of XFX is uh, here in this column. And then when you add up this XFX, you get the mean or the expected value uh, of pensions and that's for one recruit. So that's 0.7. And uh, we calculate the x square fx also by squaring the x value and then multiplying it with fx. And uh, we, do, we do this in order to calculate standard deviation later. So mean for 100 recruits will be uh, 100 times mean of each recruit. So that's uh, 70. And standard deviation of one recruit, you know, is the square root of the variance and variance is summation x square fx minus uh, the mean square. And so this column sums up to 1.3 and the mean we already have is 0.7. So that's 0.9. So standard deviation for 100 recruits will be the square root of 100 times standard deviation of each recruit. So that would be nine. And now we want the total pensions to be less than or equal to 90, at most 90, right? Uh, provide at most 90 pensions. Now, for the first time, we are going to apply the continuity correction uh, because uh, remember that uh, the number of pensions will be a discrete variable, but since we are going to apply normal approximation, uh, therefore, uh, a normal distribution is a continuous distribution. 
So in general, we should always apply continuity correction. So less than or equal to 90 is like uh, less than 90.5. Uh, the reason why we haven't applied continuity correction until now, even though we have done quite a few problems like this, is that the numbers involved were so big that it made practically no difference uh, whether you applied it or not. So uh, let's uh, look at this first and then I'll go to a previous problem to uh, illustrate what I'm talking about. So less than 90.5, so it means you will change 90.5 into z-score. So 90.5 minus mean of the t over standard deviation of t, which was the 70 and the nine. So you get um, 2.28 for the z. So now if we had not applied the continuity correction and we had just worked with 90 here, then you would do 90 minus 70 over nine, 70 and nine. So, and then you will get 2.90 uh, minus 70 is 20 divided by nine is 2.22. So you see there's some difference between 2.28 and 2.22. There's a 0 0.06 difference and that will result in um, quite different probabilities when you look in the table. So keep this in mind. We were getting 2.22 without the correction and 2.28 with the correction. Now let me return to an earlier problem. Uh, let's say this one. So there the question was, uh, we had to calculate T is less than 7,100. And we did not apply the correction and we just got the Z-score for 7,100 and we got that to be one. So let's say we had applied the correction over there. Uh, so less than 7,100 would mean uh, less than 7,100.5. So, if we had used 7100.5 here, we would get 100.5 divided by 100, which would be 1.005. And that is so close to uh, one that it would have made very little difference uh, if you had done that. So one point, even if you round the 1.005 to 1 1.01, so the difference of probabilities of one and 1.01 is so little. And remember when you round it to 1.01, you're already using approximation. Um, so, um, I mean, 1.005 could as well have been rounded to just 1.00 because uh, there's always this uh, um, question that why do we round the 0.5 to the next one instead of rounding it? So why do we round 0.5 up instead of rounding it down? It could be rounded equally in either direction. So um, you, you see that it would have made no difference or so little difference that uh, it would not affect the answer. Uh, and you can check uh, in, the, in the earlier problems as well that uh, that would be the case, that whether you applied the correction or not would not change the answer for all practical purposes. But in this case, there was significant difference as we saw of 0.06. And in general, if you are ever in doubt that whether the continuity correction makes a difference or not, uh, you can always apply the continuity correction even in those problems we have done until now. So it, it can, you can never go wrong by applying the continuity correction. So let's now return to the problem. Um, so we get Z is less, so probability T less than 90.5 is probability Z is less than 2.28. And from the tables, we see that 2.28 is um, 0.9887. And so, we go back. Hmm. 0.9887, and that rounds to 0.99, which is choicey. 